How you doing guys? It's Alexander here from Spicy Mustache with some new tips to help you creating your own green area, indoor or outdoor. Gardening and producing a good amount of fruit and vegetables in a small space could be pretty hard. Even if you try to condense many different varieties in a restricted space, you might risk to have a really small harvest due to the root mass not developing to their full potential as they are obstructed by all the other plants growing too close to each other. Most people starting a garden tend to grow plants horizontally using rows, pots or even raised beds but they kinda ignore the fact that walls, fences or even stairs or any sort of vertical space around your garden could be used to maximize your harvest in a small area. Also, it's a great way to add beauty to your garden if you're looking to add a bit of character or charm to your growing space. However, if you don't like the idea of draining your walls or poking your fences, there are still many other ways to build a vertical growing space by using some super affordable materials in a few easy steps. So dig up the like button and today I'll show you some tips in order to start growing plants vertically in your garden. Once you discover all the different techniques that you can use to grow plants vertically, it will open your eyes to a whole new way of gardening. Personally, I think vertical gardens are a step towards a better future. Growing food at home is something that will lessen our demand for commercially grown produce and it also will reduce our demand for things to be shipped from far away. It's pretty easy to envision, really. Basically, have a look at the closest balcony around your area and you will notice the most case scenario, it's pretty empty with a few plastic furnitures. Now fill it with green plants and it will instantly turn into an area which attracts and nurtures pollinators and you will also have fresh fruit and vegetables to share with your neighbors and introduce them to a more healthy diet. It's very easy to build your own trellis or frame. However, if you don't have the time or if you don't like to do it yourself, you can find them in most stores like B&Q or Home Depot close to your place. First of all, I created a project on paper so I could visualize it and understand what kind of materials are needed to create it and also how to make the trellis. I sourced all the materials from the local DIY shop but you could also find them secondhand. However, I do recommend to invest in good materials because if you want a vertical garden that's gonna last over the years, you need good quality materials. I'll build this trellis inside my raised bed, which is 1,200 millimeters by 1,000. The size of your raised bed could be slightly different, but the technique is pretty much the same. So you just need to adapt whatever I'm doing to the sizes you're working with. The frame I'm building would be 1,800 millimeters by 863 millimeters. I use this timber that I bought from B&Q, which is 22 millimeter thick, wide 38 millimeters, and 1,800 millimeter long. I'll build this frame in sections, starting from the two sides, which are 1,000 millimeters each. Put the timbers on the floor on a flat surface and measure 863 millimeters between them. Now cut the timber to the right size and arrange them into a square frame. Now put some wood under every corner so it would be easier for you to drill through the corners. You should drill a pilot hole to prevent the wood from splitting but I use screws of 3.5mm thick and 60mm length so they are perfectly suitable for just drilling through without having the pilot hole done. Once the wood is jointed, just add one bridge to every corner to make sure that the structure is more solid. So now the first side is ready and I will do the same to create another side. Now you will have to add small nails along the whole perimeter of your wooden frame with 127mm intervals. I did not thread the nails all the way in as I'll be using these nails as anchors 
for threading and weaving my frame. I use nails with a slightly big head, so it's easier to secure your cotton thread. For weaving your frame with thread, I'm using 100% cotton thread. You shouldn't use any thread containing polyester or plastic, and this thread was 60 meters long, so it's enough to make many trellis. I simply secure one end of the thread to the nail, and then start to weave all the frame until it's complete. Once the sides are done, I proceed to attach the base to the inner part of my raised bed, and I do the same on the other side with the second frame. I find this technique really good because I don't have to hammer it into the soil, but it's much more resistant. I then measure the distance between the two sides and attach two long wooden pieces in order to make it more solid. You can now run the thread on top to create an extra frame, or you can just use the two sides to grow your plants. Plants will have enough space to climb, you just need to interwind the plants that you choose to grow vertically into your frame. The reason why I suggested to use cotton thread is because if you use a metal wire, for example, the plant will be completely entangled to the frame and it will be a real pain to try to separate the frame from the plant. Cotton thread, it's 100% compostable. So once you've finished to grow your plants, you can just snip off the whole frame and put it in your compost. It is a much more sustainable way to grow plants in your garden rather than using plastic or metal. For the base of my raised bed, I use wooden branches that I collected from the local woods. If you see any sign of rotting or fungal activity on the wood that you collected, it's absolutely good because that means that the decomposing process already started and also you are collecting some indigenous microbes and transferring them to your garden. In my previous video I explained how to build a raised bed and how to fill it up with cheap materials but if you aim for quality I highly recommend this soil conditioner and feed by Natural Grower. This is a mulch that is mixed into the soil or compost before planting or it could be used on the surface as a top dressing. It is rich in nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and other trace elements and it's broken down slowly by the microorganism in your soil. This is great because it's a long-term slow-release fertilizer. It is excellent at retaining water when mixed to your soil or used as mulch, which means that basically you will have to water less the plants in your garden. It also helps to suppress the weeds around your garden. Building your own vertical garden, it's absolutely easy and fun, and you could do this in your balcony, as it takes up much less space than growing horizontally. If you're growing fruit, vegetables and herbs on your vertical garden, you are helping the environment by minimizing your impact on it. Vertical garden also help offset your carbon footprint emissions. Basically, plants absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen, and they also help to clean the air from pollutants and dust. Also, it is proved that tasks performed under the calming influence of nature are performed much better, with a greater accuracy, yielding a higher quality result. I hope you liked today's video, and if so, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post a new video. I'll see you next Friday for a new episode. Thank you very much for watching. See ya!